Hello, I'm Sergei and I want you to know what is Mesh to HRTF and how this open source software has revolutionized what your existing headphones can do. The best part is, if you can spend a few evenings of your time when using your existing headphones and computer, the free Mesh to HRTF can deliver sound that was just recently considered impossible to get outside of a few audio research labs. Note if you want to jump straight to Mesh to HRTF tutorial, and you should watch my next video. To understand what Mesh to HRTF gives to both audio professionals and enthusiasts, we should look back at what is the norm in headphone listening today. Let's start with this recent video by headphones.com, which presents a surprisingly accurate assessment of common headphone enthusiast evolution. If you haven't seen this video, it's well worth watching in full. Let's just watch a video for a moment. But this gets us to stage nine, probably the most advanced stage, and that's the importance of the head-related transfer function. This is a very deep and complicated subject, but in short, the head-related transfer function, or HRTF, can be thought of as the way your head and ears impact incoming sound. The way your ear changes the sound based on where it's coming from, which is also part of how we place sounds in space. Before, you knew that you know diffuse field and free field were headphone target response curves. At this stage though, if you know about HRTF, you know that they are also head-related transfer functions, and that they're individual to every head and every ear. This on its own should be a massive revelation for anyone trying to evaluate headphones by looking at graphs with any of these standard targets being used, or any of them being shown as the, the reference point. Okay, let's look at this. Here, Dr. Sean Olive, a true expert in all forms of audio, his writing, I participated in listening experiments where I judged the localization and sound quality of sounds reproduced through headphones that were processed with different HRTFs, including my own, measure sitting in this chair. What a huge difference! Wouldn't it be great to also have this experience? But wait, so the challenge is this. How many people are going to sit in that rotating chair with microphones in their ears for 15 minutes to measure the HRTFs at dozens of angles? And he's right. The most common way to get your true HRTF is by finding a lab with the right anechoic chamber and spending from 15 minutes to over an hour listening to repeating noises until the measurement is complete. Here's a great paper from 2020 which reviews measurement of head-related transfer functions. No matter which measurement method you would choose, we can all agree that it is practically impossible to get your HRTF properly measured at home. Besides, just having an HRTF professionally measured does not mean it is good. Let's listen how it works from Ben Supper, a man with a PhD in spatial psychoacoustics and hands-on experience measuring HRTFs. A thing about head-related transfer functions is it's really quite hard to capture them. You have to acquire hundreds and sometimes thousands of data points, which itself is tedious and hard. Then you have to pass this data through a whole computational pipeline that does things like correcting for the distance of a sound source, computing out the response of the signal chain in the ear canal if it happens to be in the data, accounting for any reflections off surfaces you don't want to capture, and time aligning what may be thousands of separate recordings so they all pretend to start precisely synchronously, the better than a sample's resolution. If you've ever had to work with this kind of data, you'll appreciate that it ends up being two parts art to one part science. To summarize, there is a high risk that a measured HRTF contains errors introduced by the equipment and processing techniques used in that specific lab. You can be sure that HRTFs measured in two labs will not be the same. Thankfully, we live in 21st century and we can model and simulate everything, from car crashes to nuclear physics. Simulations may never be perfect, but arguably the HRTF measurements have even greater accuracy issues. In fact, Genelec, one of the most trusted studio monitor manufacturers in the world, came out with the product Genelec Aural ID, which does just that. If you have no time for mesh to HRTF, Aural ID will simulate your individual HRTF from the data collected using a smartphone camera. Note that in its current form, Genelec Aural ID is locked to work only with Genelec DAW plugins and is not exactly cheap. Notably, according to Genelec, the ability to create and listen to your own HRTF is worth almost 500 euros per year. By now it's clear to you that mesh to HRTF enables all of us to simulate our HRTFs practically for free. 
The open source message RTF software is generously developed by Acoustics Research Institute in Austria in collaboration with a number of great researchers in Europe. While the basic software was available for a few years, just recently it was upgraded to make it much more accessible on all platforms, all skill levels, and without dependencies on commercial software. For completeness sake, I need to mention that there is one more technique that can be used by enthusiasts today. Binaural room impulse response measurements. This is not the same as measuring HRTF, but this approach does include your true HRTF in the overall room and speaker virtualization. I would refer to the excellent open source Impulsifier by Jakob Passanen. On the project page you can also find links to Smith Realizer, which is expensive, hard to acquire, but probably the most advanced Breer product on the market. So how does it sound? Well, just like this projector which shines black light onto a white wall, it is magical. It's perfect sound and, uh, well, perhaps not exactly perfect. As you realize, it's not quite physically possible to demonstrate the benefits of your unique individual HRTF over one YouTube video for everyone. Thankfully, we can browse through marketing materials of all the commercial virtual surround technologies to get excited. Just look at all the great statements about the sound using just generic HRTFs, or in some cases actually personalized HRTFs, which is not the same thing as individual HRTF. Because practically all consumer headphone technologies that promise 7.1 sound today will apply some form of HRTF on you with the hope that you are close enough to the average person so that the resulting sound provides more benefits than damage due to the unavoidable sound colorations. Remember that only Genlec Aural ID promises actual individual HRTF, but that is not quite consumer level product. Just don't get me wrong, all of these commercial products have their place and can be valuable to their users. Meshed HRTF requires substantial time and effort to use, so any technology that just works or just asks for one photo of your ear will be accessible to more users than Mesh to HRTF. Unfortunately, these simplified approaches do not work equally well for everyone. And here Mesh to HRTF may just be the ultimate solution that you were missing. As I cannot provide a meaningful demo, the best I can do is to describe the resulting sound. In my experience, if you listen with your simulated HRTF using Sparta Binauralizer, you should experience undeniable spatial effect with only modest change in timbre. If you ever tried any virtual surround algorithm for headphones, the sound with your HRTF will certainly be better in all regards. And this is not just for games. General Aural ID is meant for critical listening to immersive mixes. Depending on your headphone frequency response, more or less timbral correction will be necessary. That is because the audio pipeline has to make guesses about your headphone frequency response. But you will always get outstanding accurate spatial information and timber consistency compared to non-individual HRTFs. This correction can be EQ'd manually, but there are attempts to make this correction process more automatic as well. In my experience, when using headphones that are close to Harman target response gives impressive results without any equalization at all. And it is well worth using individual HRTF even without head tracking. Let me clarify. With Mesh to HRTF you can simulate as little as just two virtual stereo speaker positions and using your normal headphones get the most accurate stereo imaging just for you. Or if you simulate a typical spherical HRTF, which contains over a thousand of virtual sound source locations, you can add a head tracker and uh, listen to any number of virtual speakers while freely rotating your head relative to your dream surround sound system. So this and anything in between is possible with Mesh to HRTF. Now let's get the expectations in check. If you're a researcher in the field of binaural audio, when you already know that Mesh to HRTF has been validated and used for over five years. The difference now is that the latest Mesh to HRTF is much easier to use and will work on almost all computers. If you produce music, 
work in DAW or you know what Reaper is, then great news. This really is an open source alternative to Genlec Aural ID that is likely to be even better. Remember, you can even use head tracking. This software for your needs is already available and you can get everything you expect already today. If you are an audio enthusiast in search for the ultimate headphone experience, I will demonstrate how exactly to listen to any music on a PC using the benefits of individual HRTFs. If it works for the pros, it's certainly worth trying. But I will not try to convince anyone how they should enjoy their music. The limitation is that as of early 2022, the software with HRTF support may involve a bit more hassle to use than you would like, especially if you often restart your computer or disconnect headphones. Finally, if you are a gamer and want that ultimate surround sound on a PC that so many gaming headsets advertise but fail to deliver, then the answer is we're almost there. You can certainly test out virtual surround using your simulated HRDF today, but we need to figure out the software to get the reliability and latency where it is needed for action games. Most building blocks are already available, we just need to put some time and skill to connect the dots. So why is it important that more people know about mesh to HRDF? Why am I making this video? Today, not even enthusiasts and professionals fully realize that individual HRTFs are within reach and very affordable. Therefore, a lot of use cases for HRTFs are not explored. A lot of software is not yet written, and there is so much more that can be done, such as enabling simple individual headphone calibration or enabling use of custom HRTFs in games and VR. We are only scratching the surface of what can be done when more people have access to their own high-quality HRDFs. I will follow this video up with a series of video tutorials that show the complete road from nothing to your personal HRDF, so that anyone can do this without any prior knowledge. This may be the first video on YouTube about Mesh to HRDF, but from now on, if you see someone mentioning individual HRDFs as something unobtainable, please send them a link to a Mesh to HRDF video. But for now, have a great day.